feature entertainer tonight. He comes to us from New York City, and he is an award-winning magician that performs for corporate events and special events, and recently, recently he was returned to us from performing at the Mount Everest Base Camp. So he has brought magic to a whole new level. <laughs> And we are so pleased he's here to perform for all of you tonight. Please welcome the magic of Max Davidson. <laughs> Oh, Chicago, it is good to be back in the United States. Yeah. In fact, that's an applause. All right, you're in for a great show. So, yeah, I spent the last four months of 2022 backpacking around the world. I was very lucky. I got to make memories pretty much every day. And many of you were gracious enough to share your memories with us. Not publicly, of course, but one to two of you per table wrote down a memory, sealed it in the envelope, stuck it in the bowl. Now. I've had way too many people accuse me of either looking at these or being able to see through them, so we need to do our due diligence. What's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin, you wrote one down, right? Yes. Yes, good. Caitlin, just grab like a clump of these real quick off the top, or from the bottom, wherever you really want, and just hold them up to the light. There's a bunch of bright lights. Make sure they're completely opaque. You can't see through them. And you can look. These are legitimately sealed as well, right? If you ever tried to open an envelope sealed with, sealed with your saliva, it kind of sucks to open, right? All right, so you can stick that back. We're not going to do it. Good. Thank you very much. So, we're not going to open them, but we're going to pull a couple out. If you hear your name, just stand up. You don't have to come on stage, and we'll see how it goes. Sound all right? <laughs> Beautiful. All righty. Is there an Andrea B. in the audience? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. All right. Andrea, I'm going to have you make eye contact with me for like a little bit. If you need to zone out, I don't blame you. What I want you to do is, in between us, imagine your memory just playing on a loop, all right? So you have this thing happening, and you're playing on a loop, all right? For just a moment, let that fade away. Do you know how old you were in this memory? Did you focus on your age? More or less, yeah. More or less? All right, so focus on that age. And I want you to see it like a big, you know those big like 18 balloons that have for 18th birthday? Focus and make that age like those big balloons and then make those balloons a color, right? For me, I'd choose red, but it can be whatever you want, okay? Yeah. All right, don't give any details away. All I wanna know is, what color did you make those balloons? Green. Green, all right, so green's an interesting color, right? If you ask, say, like a five-year-old to choose their favorite color, make something a color, right? You usually get like pink, you get some blue. Green, slightly more mature color, not like orange or magenta, I'm not like, you know, not like a <laughs> adult color, but something in the middle. So I'm gonna peg you right now at this age as like some kind of teenager, is that correct? Yeah, a teenager? Good. Yeah. Focus on the age you're maybe 14, 15, 14 years old? Yeah. Yeah, 14? Yeah. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Honing on the memory, did you focus on, if you didn't write one down, you got to choose between the smell and the sound and the taste. Focus, don't say it out loud. Just take a deep breath in. Yeah, you went right through your nose. It's a smell, right? Okay. Uh, are you able to locate yourself in this memory to a certain place? Yeah, like in this memory, like are you in a, you know, sometimes it's just like cookies, but sometimes you're like focusing on a place. Are you able to do a place? Yes, you are, okay. So focus on the place, see yourself there, see that memory playing on a loop. Nice, what do you do for a living? I work for a delivery company. Delivery company, all right. <laughs> so maybe you're gonna go back to a memory that's like slightly more exotic. Yes or no, you're not, you're somewhat in the United States. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here. Yes or no, are you in, in Puerto Rico in this memory? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes. Good, and it's the smell and you're in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay, now we can hone in on this. Yep, you're with people, right? If you're a kid, you're with people. If you're, usually if you get an older, if you get a little bit older, you'll do a memory that's you know, you're more independent. But for you, you're a kid, you're still 14, you're gonna be with people, focus on who you're with. Mom, dad, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends. You're with your grandparents, yes or no? Yes? yes? <laughs> Yes or no, Andrea, are you thinking of, you're in Puerto Rico, you're 14 years old, it's the smell of mountains at your grandparents' house? Is that correct? Give her a huge round of applause, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You take a seat. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Mary G, are you here? Mary G, are you here? Oh, sweet, Mary. Uh, same deal. 
You know the drill. Look me in the eye. Think of your age. You know the age in this? Yeah. Good. Make them big balloons right in front of you. What color are the balloons? Blue. Blue. Blue balloon. All right. Now, you saw how I, how I analyzed with Andrew, so maybe you're going to try and psych me out a little bit. I think it's slightly a little bit older. You're a teen, like 17, 18. Is that correct? No. No. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Think of it's a smell or a sound or a taste. Again, deep breath in. Deep breath out. It's a sound, yeah? It's, really, it's not a sound. You're not 17. All right, fully just in the interest of time here, rather than messing up in five minutes, I'm just going to say, take a seat. I don't think I'm going to get this right now, but thank you for writing it down. <laughs> What's going to do? What's going to do? Uh, we'll move on. Is there a Peter, Peter H? Peter H? Are you also over there? Oh, Peter, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, stay standing, but one second. Is there someone, this is both like comforting and, and bizarre, is, is there someone thinking of the sound of the ice cream truck? You're like four or five years old, or someone thinking of the sound of the ice cream truck? If it is, just shout out yes or no. Yes. <laughs> You're actually thinking of the sound of the ice cream truck? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes or yeah. no. Don't, uh, don't think about it too much right now. A little bit distracting, but thank you. <laughs> We're gonna go back to you. Peter, could you point to anybody in the audience who you don't know? Right here. Could you stand up as well? Pleasure to meet you. What's your name? Ethan. Ethan. Excellent. So we have Ethan and Peter. We're gonna try something called triangulation, all right? Ethan, both of us are gonna try and figure out what Peter is thinking of. So, same deal. Peter, I need you to focus here. Get those balloons in front of you. I'm not even going to ask you to say it out loud at this point. I just want you to see them yep. and focus on your age. You are five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I passed it. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I passed it again. Yes or no, are you 12 in this memory? 12. Beautiful. All right. All right. Smell, sound, taste, don't say it out loud. Smell, sound, taste, deep breath in again. Smell, all right, so, smell, right? Good, all right, so Ethan, those are the hints for you. We're both gonna try and get this. We're both gonna try and guess Peter's smell when he is 14, all right? So you're gonna think of something, I'm gonna think of something, we'll see how it goes, all right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I got, I got mine. Ethan, we'll go with you first. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what do you think Peter smells? Pumpkin pie. Okay, pumpkin pie. <laughs> Uh, yes or no, is that correct? Sorry. No. All right. <laughs> Why would it be? Uh, OK, you know what? This is kind of funny, though, because I, uh, I think I know I went wrong. And Ethan, you might find this kind of funny. So take a seat. I think I know exactly what went wrong. Really focus in on the smell. Don't say it out loud. I'm going to do my second guess in blue, so you can tell the difference. All right, first guess was in black, second guess in blue. And no, I, I'll explain to you what went wrong. So. Yeah. It really does matter who you were looking at. And I made a small mistake. If you notice, I shifted a little bit over to the right. I was looking mostly at Ethan. Uh, I was not looking at Peter. And that is where I went wrong. Because the first thing I wrote down, I'll show you in black. Again, second guess is in blue. Luckily, we don't need that anymore. Uh, first guess was in black. That was pumpkin pie. So that was you. And the second guess, yes or no? Fresh cut grass, and you're a, a caddy somewhere? That's correct. Thank you very much. Give a huge round of applause. Oh, you know what? Stay standing. Stay standing. I, I might. I'm going to be honest with you right now. I might regret this, OK? But we're going to go for it anyway. Yes or no? You're a caddy, right? And this is actually a real memory. OK. Do you know, do you know the name of the country club that you were a caddy at? I do. I'm going to regret this. All right, I want you to see it in like big, big letters in front of you. All right? It's like. 
the Hollywood sign has then transformed into this. Give me one small hint. Tell me where in the country this country club is. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Here's something I know about Wisconsin. I'm from Colorado. We're quite proud of our mountains. Anyone else from Colorado? Absolutely. You love it. And if you're from Colorado, you're quite proud of your mountains, right? And other states try and impersonate your mountains, and they call them mountains, but let's be honest, they're not. Um, no, it's true. Yes or no? It's Wisconsin. Yes or no, does this country club have the, the word mound in it? Mound? Mound. Yeah, it's in it? It's not the whole name, right? Good. Red, green, purple, no. Give me a loud yes or no. Is it, is it Blue Mound Country Club? Yes, it is. You've been fantastic. Give me a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Woo! All right. Uh, look, I hate to be the guy that begs for money on stage. Does anyone have a $1 bill, though, that I could borrow? Just a $1 bill? I, I ask for a one because if something goes wrong, we don't want it to be more than a one. Probably won't go wrong, but you never know. Thank you so much. What's your name? Mike. Mike, thank you very much for volunteering your $1 bill. Oh, by the way, you guys should all have envelopes like this. They say proof I have self-control on them. Hopefully they're still closed. If you open them, you do not have self-control. Uh, <laughs> for the rest of you, keep it closed. Uh, Mike, I want to make sure, is Mike, right? Yes. Beautiful. I want to make sure you get your exact dollar bill back. Now, there's two main ways to identify a dollar bill. One is the nerdy way, one is the illegal way. I will show you both. <laughs> the illegal way looks like this. You can't legally tear U.S. currency. But we're going to do it anyway. And as I'm sure you can tell by my conception of illegal... Yes, I was a badass in high school. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> No, obviously, the second that you print magician on the business cards that you do have when you're 15, you permanently disqualify yourself from the status of badassery. Needless to say, Mike, I'm going to give you this. In a moment, you'll put it on your pocket. By the way, did you bring a coat to the theater? Yes. Put the coat on for me. I'm going to use that in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, there's a second way to identify a dollar bill. That is, of course, the serial number. This is the nerdy way. Every dollar bill has its own serial number. I don't need you to memorize it, that would be excessive, but I do want you to be familiar with it. So, front two rows here. You're just gonna remember the first three digits, which are three, three, eight. Yeah? And you can confirm like it actually is three, three, yes. eight. Good, I'm not just pulling these numbers out of nowhere. All right, next two rows. You're gonna remember the middle three digits, which are seven, nine, nine. All right, seven, nine, nine. And then finally, everyone upstairs, you're gonna remember the last two digits, which are seven, nine. All right, so let's just try this once. Everyone in the front, what are your three digits? Three, three, Killer. Here. Seven, Even better. Upstairs. Seven, like a symphony. I love it. <laughs> All right, Mike, do me a favor. Yes. Stick that piece in your pocket so we don't lose it. Good? Yep. Join me on stage, please. Everyone's going to give you a big round of applause. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much. There's a balloon over there. Yes, yes, for me. Well, it was for you. Your Valentine's Day present is coming a little bit later. Thanks, Max. I know. Thank you. Give him a round of applause. Look what I did. He's killing it. Mike, so important. Hold on to this bill for a moment. Okay. That actually is the serial number, yes? <laughs> yes. It actually is torn. It is torn. Great. Could you please fold it in half and fold it into quarters? Yeah. And just stick it on that paper clip, please. Don't let the balloon go, otherwise we're going to need a ladder. Okay. All right. Hold on to the string, please. Okay. All right. Jeff over there, your magic host for the evening, okay. is going to escort you around. All right. All right. You're going to go outside, okay. past any trees or any awnings so it doesn't get caught, okay. and you're going to release your dollar bill into the Chicago night. All right? Okay. <laughs> He's going to hold the door for you. You're not going to get locked out. Okay. All right? And then when you're done, you can just take your seat. Does that sound okay? Sounds good. You're brilliant. Give Mike a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's going to take him a second to do that. So while he does, I'm going to tell you a story. So a couple months ago, back in September, I was backpacking through Europe. And my girlfriend, who was in San Diego at the time, 
mails me a letter. Now, full credit to her, she had to go through a lot of effort to do this. She had to coordinate not only getting it over the Atlantic Ocean, but timing it so it met me where I was traveling. So she goes through all this effort, sends a letter over the ocean. And unfortunately, by the time the letter arrived, yeah, you guessed it. By the time the letter arrived, we had broken up. <laughs> what do you do? So I still got the envelope, and I had my hand on the flap, and also, welcome back. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. So I get the envelope, have my hand on the flap, but I, I didn't open it. In all honesty with you, I couldn't, because this was... How do I describe this? This was a love letter from someone who didn't love me anymore, at least not in the same way. So, I did the only thing that I felt like I could. I just sent the letter home. Not because I didn't want to open it, but because quite honestly, I didn't have the stomach to. Your name is? Andrew. Andrew. Pick a person, any person. Who are we working with today, Andrew? Bob G. Bob G, where are you? <laughs> That's convenient. Sweet. Welcome, Bob. Uh, Bob, you have a little brown envelope? You do, good. We'll use this in a moment, all right? So look, this is a true story. We, we, we break up and I was distraught. I was alone on the other side of the world. Like, we literally broke up over FaceTime on a mountain in Italy, which on one hand is terrible, and on the other hand, most scenic breakup ever. <laughs> I was in the Dolomites. But I was distraught, and I kept picturing us back together, not even dating again, just like back in the same room, because we were so far apart. But it didn't happen. She stayed in San Diego, I stayed on my trip, and bringing us back together was like, it was like a magic trick that I could never do. We could try this. Look, anyone in the audience could have volunteered a dollar bill, right? A bunch of you put your hands up, might happen to be convenient, but to be clear, like we didn't set anything up before. No one asked you if you had a dollar bill. Right. No, you just volunteered the dollar bill. You stood up here, and without me touching anything, you verified the tear, you verified the serial number, and you went out there and you just released it into the Chicago sky. Is that correct? Correct. Good. Andrew, you could have chosen anyone, and of course, Bob, had you just not written your name down, you wouldn't have been chosen, but you did. And here we are. Could you take your envelope, bring it on stage? Everyone's gonna give you a round of applause. <laughs> I'll have you stand right at that microphone, please. Man, I gotta talk. Yeah. <laughs> also, to be clear, no one has touched that envelope, correct? No, and to be clear, I really didn't want to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Give Bob a huge round of applause for being up here. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to make you do anything too scary. All I ask is that without me touching it, you open that envelope. Okay. I'll hold that. Okay. Obviously, this is only interesting if it's torn. Is it torn? It is torn. Get that torn. piece ready, by the way, but while you're doing that, could you please read out the serial number of the dollar bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. 338-799-79. Give a round of applause. Still have that piece? That's awesome. Yeah? I'll take this. You head back to your seat. A huge round of applause. Bob, thank you so much for coming on stage. You killed it. The piece lost? You know what, I'm gonna leave this here for a second. We're gonna come back to it, take your time, we're gonna get it. Because, because, I guarantee you, a bunch of you are also wondering, well, what am I gonna do with my envelope? Is there a secret, like, thermal printer in it that makes the bill appear and then disappears? Look, here's the deal. It is correct, yes? It is correct, wonderful. Thank you very much, that bill is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also, I'm gonna give you a whole dollar bill so that you, you make a dollar. Congratulations. <laughs> But look, this story is completely true. I've never opened this envelope, and I'm going to issue the exact same challenge to you. I want you to take your envelopes home and put them on a shelf or in a drawer or maybe get rid of the picture of your kids and kind of stick it there. I won't judge. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't open it. Now, there's a million reasons I could give you for this, but it ultimately comes down to the fact that if you open it, 
it's immediately going to become a piece of trash. I mean, literally, like, opening that envelope is going to be like finding out that the secret to the universe is 42. Right? You're going to be disappointed. And it is, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you keep it closed, it's going to be a small but everlasting reminder of how legitimately great it is to just let go. But half of you are going to do this anyway. So if, if you open the envelope, <laughs> just follow the rule of not doing it in the theater. All right? Give the people who are here who want the chance to keep it closed that opportunity. And as a consolation prize, I'll open this one, because this is not the real envelope. This is a dummy envelope, right? Real ones at home. And what I do is, before every show, I just ask the hosts for a name of somebody coming, and I literally just write down a random name. So for example, tonight, it's Mary. And oh, this is actually very convenient, because I missed yours, Mary. Um, all right, so I'm not going to get it, but we can do something else. Could you join us on stage real quick? Give a round of applause. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Quick as you can, come down here. You're gonna stand right here next to the mic. Again, this has been here for the entire show. And it says, Mary, I make something up. I just make up, uh, it says, Mary, I make up a random return address, et cetera. Thank you so much, Mary, join us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm just curious, you can hold on to this, because I'm not gonna get it, but I do wanna yeah. know, what was, what was the memory? Uh, the memory was me uh, at 10 years old, remembering the smell of popcorn at my school gym. It's a good memory. Thank it's a good you. memory. Yeah. Um, well, look, again, not the real envelope. It's a dummy envelope, and it's not a real letter inside. It's a dummy letter. So again, I'm not going to touch it. It's been here the whole time. Could you please open that up? Sure. And just read out what it says inside. Yeah. <laughs> Concession stand, popcorn, school gym, 10 years old. <laughs> Mary, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. fantastic. Uh, hold on to these. Can I? You know what? Stay here for just one moment. Okay. Because, look, any, anyone could have volunteered a dollar bill. Did you have multiple bills in your pocket, Mike? Yes. Yeah, and you just volunteered that one. Right. Could you, for the first time, please read the first three digits of the return address? Sure. 338. 338. <laughs> and could you please read the zip code? 79979. 338 79979. Mary, you've been fantastic. These are both for you. Mary, a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. You can head back to your seat. Chicago, you've been brilliant. Thank you so much. Next, David Sims.